those who think you can keep picking, uh, cutting our banana leaves because we are short stems, boy, you don't know how much you have deceived yourselves. Um, yes, they even say we, we are accused of uh, stealing the wealth, the minerals of Congo. One thing we are not, and that's what makes us, uh, what I've just said, we are not thieves. We work for what we have and what we get. In fact, we are where we are, I think some decent progress, but not yet too much, we, we still have to do a lot. By the way, also on account of the support we get from these people who accuse us or who accept that we actually do that, meaning these powerful countries, they actually give us a lot of support. And if they took time to scrutinize because they support other countries as well, including the Congo that we are accused so much for what's happening there. They will find they will, or they will not find a place where we give value for their money than Rwanda. They will not. I can bet on this. For every dollar they spend on us, or they support us with, we will show more for it than anybody they give their money. And it is deliberate. It's not by accident. It's who we are. It's who we want to be and nobody will take it away from us. But when it comes to trying to cut the banana leaves because we are short stems, they can or they will discover that you also provide value for money. Meaning, it will actually be costly for them. Now, let me add to that. For the FDRR and uh, the affiliate groups, Rudurunana and so on and so forth. And by the way, affiliate groups means also there are some individuals either whom we have here in prison, who are brought from outside. or others who masquerade around as the so-called uh, the opposition, whom we have just left free to mess up themselves. 
until uh, some point when, uh, if need be, to take care of them, take care of them. Problems. These people, they took, spent months in a hotel where they put them. And for those months, not a single government official visited them or came to talk to them until they decided to, I don't know whether to escape or do what, and left. Now, the problem comes back to be Rwanda's problem. When they started fighting, don't ask me how or where they came from, but we have had a moment to discuss this openly in meetings of heads of state in Nairobi, and it was clearly demonstrated to the Congolese leaders what had been going on. And the only thing they kept telling us was, no, 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 these people must go back where they came from. And then you ask them, say, where did they come from? <laughs> or, or, or what time do you mean? Because even if you assume that they came from here, where did they come from when they came here? And I asked one simple question in the meeting. I said, we would be wasting our time if we do not answer this question and we continued discussing this issue. I said, one simple question. Are these people we are dealing with, or having to deal with, Congolese, or Rwandese, or Ugandans? Fortunately, the Congolese leaders answered that they are actually Congolese. Then I said, okay, now we can have a conversation. Because my impression at first was that you were saying that these are Rwandese because they speak Kenya Rwanda. Because they are wonderful, as I hear some people call them that. But they are Congolese. These are citizens of Congo. They have their ancestral homes and things in Congo, not here. Here they are refugees. We have over 80,000 of them as refugees in the camps. So, how do we deal with this issue? How does this issue become Rwanda's issue? Just being associated for convenience. I mean, I can see those translators. I think some people have, uh, I wanted them to hear this. Uh, can you see some people having problems of uh, these headphones? Can you please sort out that problem? Maybe there are those who don't want to hear. That's a different issue. But, <laughs> but I, I want those who want to hear to be able to, to, uh, to, to listen to me, to be able to do so, so sort out their problems, please. Nonetheless, I will continue. For those who want to hear and for those who don't want to hear. That's what we always do. There are many people we talk to knowing that they are not listening, but you have to do a duty of, of letting them know so that there is no excuse about uh, So, you 
this problem, in my view, is not too difficult to address, but you have to do the right thing. I want to remind people that they have to think about how to address the FDR problem. It's been there for too long. Forget about stories being created around it. They say, no, they, they are no longer there. They came to Rwanda, and then we sent them back. And Yeah, but on record also of the UN, there are those who have been repatriated over time, and we receive them and reintegrate them. That's why there is that uh, center, uh, is it in Motobo? They are on record. The records are there, very clear. So that problem has to be looked at. The other problem is the so-called M23 or other groups. By the way, there are over 100 groups, rebel groups. Did you know that in Eastern Congo? I'm fighting for all kinds of things. I don't know some of them. So it, 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 they can't already be existing because of Rwanda. Certainly not. If it was because of Rwanda, maybe they would be together. So that problem needs to be addressed in the right context. And those problems are Congolese problems. They are not Rwanda's problems. But we can help because we are interested in a stable neighbor. Peace in the Congo or Eastern Congo is peace for us. So we can't be questioned about or our desire to have a peaceful country and region cannot be questioned, honestly. We can't. Even if for Those who accuse us of stealing minerals, if, if that were to be true, I think we can do better still by having peace. Yes. Because when we have peace, then you don't even need to steal. You would actually have, uh, you know. You know, I was talking to some very senior people recently from somewhere who are saying, no, the Congolese are saying we, we steal their quota, we steal their gold. And then I asked them one question. There was many, many leaders. I said, there's something I know. Some people come from Congo, whether they smuggle or go through the right channels, they, they bring minerals, and, but they, they, most of it goes through here, does not stay here. It goes to Dubai, goes to Brussels, goes to Tel Aviv, goes to Russia, it used to go to Russia, I don't know whether it still goes there. It goes everywhere. So I was asking them, I said, are you on the list of those who are stealing minerals of Congo? Because these things, they end up with you. For, for us, we are, we are now, they go through our country. But they are accusing us of stealing Congo's minerals. 
How about the destination? Why don't you talk about it? And, and if we, we actually deployed everything, every effort, and stopped this thing flowing, it would, the accusation would be even worse. Yeah, they would be seeing no, no, no more gold coming through here. Going to them, then they say, uh -huh, these people, 